Hello everyone, many of you might remember when I used to play Duck Hunt uh, Arcade on MAME 2003 and 2017 on NES Classic and I had severe issues with control and sound, but no more. I'm doing a dummy folder method right now, which is uh, start menu, uh, media, which is the flash hard drive, and I have a dummy folder right here, which is outside the hashy directory, and then I'm going to load up Duck Hunt Arcade. And uh, you need to have the RetroArch UI shortcut, which you can grab from hashy. Modules, came up the Mod Hub Games tab under RetroArch UI, you have a few different choices. I'm loading Duck Hunt Arcade with Main 2003 Extreme, which has fixed up control and sound uh, fixes. There we go, Main 2003 Extreme. You can also do stuff on Main 2003 Plus. Plus has a slighter, better edge on compatibility, Extreme with the performance and speed. They are great companion pieces, and I work and collaborate with them on a regular basis, and we have many things going back and forth, such as custom OSTs, did E fixes, IRM fixes, and so on. But right here, the way the controls used to work, you tap up and they fly right back, they'd reset, like on games like Alien 3, Interesting Park Arcade, and so on. But you can actually go into uh, R2, and I am actually using my PlayStation Classic controller. If you don't have an R2, you can go into controls from Retro Settings and temporarily set another button to R2 so you can get into here. But uh, we're going into uh, analog controls right now. And right here, you need to be concerned with the X and Y key and joypad speed. I'm going to take these down to roughly uh, 6 right now. Okay? And there are a few other cool things you can do as well. But these were by default set to 30. And if you're playing a game like Doom or Quake, you might want to have different uh, proportionate levels of preciseness depending on how your gameplay is. We're going to return to main menu here. And then you can also get cheats and uh, game history each mods from the KMFD mod hub as well. I'm going to go into game history. And uh, some games have more illustrious histories, such as OutRun, where it actually talks about movie appearances like in... Donnie Darko, and so on. And uh, right here, this is cool. It shows the technical specifics, the orientations, and uh, trivia released in March 1985. And then right here, when you check this out, it talks about the differences between the arcade and the NES version. That's cool. More animations, slightly different palette, and zero game modes. Instead, the game starts with a duck hunting game with multiple ducks, just like Game Beyond the NES version. Very, very cool stuff. Check this out with the game history. I'm going to go back. Okay, we're going to go to the cheats, and I'm going to give myself enable disable cheat. I'm going to actually do infinity ammo to make sure I can take a few more ducks out until I get used. It'll be like uh, training wheels for right now. So I'm going to put select, and uh, we should, look, more precise control is awesome. I think it's very, very cool that you can actually have a second controller and port to on your original NES hardware and control the ducks. Okay, let's make sure I take a few ducks out here. One. Two. And then I have infinity ammo if I'd like to as well. The dump. I wish I could shoot the dog though. Oops. Infinity ammo for the win. Yeah. But uh, yes, we're going to go to another game right now. Another game that uh, people have been asking me about. Dummy folder method as well. And this is going to be a very, very interesting one because it requires very specific calibration in order to play. So pay very, very close attention, and there are two different ways you can run this game. I'm going to show you both ways real quick in succession. We're going to load Terminator 2, and I'm going to load it with Main 2003 Extreme. Okay, there's a very, very specific calibration here, so pay close attention to what I'm doing. From the get-go, once I load the game, I'm going to go into uh, Input. I'm going to go to User 2 Binds. And I'm going to set this device index for user 2 to the same controller as PlayStation Classic controller. So I have both controllers controlled with one. And you're going to need to do this for this specific game. No way, Jose. I need to calibrate the gun calibration values. Uh, right there, I'm at uh, 127 and 128. I need to go all the way up to the top left. There we go. Nice shot. And then I need to go to the dead center, which is uh, 2894. Get as close to you can as 2894. I'm getting close. It just takes a little bit of a finesse to get to it. There we go. 2894. Nice shot. And then 255, 255 for the bottom. Nice shot. And then I'm going to do the same thing for player two. 2-2. Two, two. Nice shot. And there's a reason you might want to do this for a player too. I'll show you. 28, 94. Nice shot. 2, 5, 5, 5. 
The reason you want to do this for both players is you might want to be able to do two player mode activate, which I'm going to do right now. So I have it all completely calibrated. I'm going to push select. Now I'm playing two player mode activate because I still have user two controller set to controller one. So I have double firepower. And I can even do cheats if I so choose to. Uh, right here, cheats. Now I can do infinity missiles if I want to. Awesome. Infinity missiles for player one and two. Look at that. How awesome is that? Infinity missiles for the win! And there's another damn cool way you can play this as well, which I'm going to show you next, once I play it for a moment. Yes, you can actually go into the analog controls and change your sensitivity if you so choose to. Like, uh, right here. You can change your choice pad feed. I'll put it up to 14 here for both of these. Uh, we'll do, uh, right here. 14 for all of these. There we go, a little bit faster now. There we go. You can even change the sensitivity uh, for the joypad speed to different numbers so you can actually have the cursors moving in different proportions. Like, check this out. I'll actually change it to be a little bit slower on player one. So, like, now they're actually in a different spot. And you can even reverse them if you want to, control-wise, so they're actually moving in different directions. I mean, there's so many variables that you can do. And I obviously have Infinity Missiles, and I didn't just watch that new Terminator movie. Very, very fun stuff. I love all the Terminator things, even the bad ones, like Terminator 3. Still fun to play. Let's see what's in these boxes here. By the way, there's another really, really cool way you can play this as well. With Mame 2003 Plus, with Borders. I'm going to show you that too. I'm going to go into uh, load the same game, Star Directory. Media and again, there are so many different things you can do. I'm going to show you a few things. We're going to go into uh, 4K, load the game again, but we're going to load uh, May 2003 Plus. You might have to wait till the next update because some of this is work in progress right now. But we're loading the same game with May 2003 Plus, arcade May 2003 Plus, and I'm going to try to get this implemented into uh, May 2003 Steam in the future. But there's a Borders H mod, and nearly 100 games have Borders. I can add games if you ask me to. Let me know what games you want, I'll add them manually. And via the main 2003 Plus method, we have Borders, which uh, I have an H mod for as well. And I'm going to try to get this into main 2003 stream in the future, but we can essentially load nearly 100 games. I can do other games custom if you guys and gals request them, so they have these Borders as well. I can do it for practically any game you name, so you load the game and they automatically go into the Borders. Awesome stuff here. We're going to do the calibration again. I'm going to go into Input, and I'm going to set it back to, of course, uh, User 2 Binds. They have the same controller, right here, disabled, set to PlayStation Classic controller. And then you do this on any other uh, system, such as uh, Contra for the NES, you're going to be able to have two-player mode activate. Both controllers controlled with one controller. It is amazing. And I've showcased this in many videos. We're going to do the calibration okay, right now. Jose. Okay. Calibrations, let's do this. Way, way top left, 2-2. Two, two. Nice shot. Then we're going to do the center, which is, again, at uh, 28 and 34. Get as close as we can here. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but as close as you can get to it. 28.94. Okay, that's good. 28.94. Nice then way bottom right, as close as we can get. 255. Nice shot. And then we're going to do the same thing for player two. Nice shot. 28.94. Again, just uh, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It'd be as close as you can get to twenty-eight ninety-four. Okay. And again, I can get to it uh, just by playing around a little bit. Twenty-eight ninety-four. Nice shot. And then way bottom right. Here we nice go. Shot. No Calibration no successful. Let's play the game with two-player mode. Activate. <laughs> You can even do it in reverse, so you have player two moving opposite day. direction where you're left and right on one side and right and left on the other side, which is very, very cool stuff, indeed. But we have this nifty border here, and everything's running awesome. How awesome is that? Incredible. And these borders are so amazing for our countless games. You should see what happens when I load Double Dragon with the border and a custom OSD at the same time. 
But definitely cool. You got two different ways of running these. You can run these with Main Tails and Free and uh, Extreme and Plus. You might have issues running with Plus until I do the next update because I'm doing some work in progress stuff right now. But with Extreme, it's gonna work. A great, great game without a doubt. You know, the performance and speed is slightly better on Extreme because it's running a little bit slower on uh, Plus right now. And another game we can do this on, we're gonna do this right now Star Trek 3 Media. Dummy, 4K, we got a little Jurassic Park Arcade, which is one of my favorite ones to play. Right here, Jurassic Park Arcade, we're going to run this with Main Tales and 3 Extreme. Same thing. And again, it used to reset the controls the moment you tried pushing up, down, left, or right, and it was uncontrollable. But right now it's running absolutely flawlessly with the analog controls. <laughs> Check this out. Awesome. You can change the sensitivity if you want to again. Analog controls, same thing. Uh, change the joy pad speed, we'll change it to 12 on both of these. Resume. Now more finesse. Awesome stuff here. Fantastic game, and this is a tough game to run. Very, very CPU intensive, but it's running great with Extreme right now. And you can just hold the button down. You have infinity ammo to start with. Awesome stuff here. Never ever get sold. And there are dozens upon dozens of Lycan games you can play. And my favorite of them all, Carnival actually works, but not very fast, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to play that at full speed mode activate. It was actually one of my prerequisite uh, demands for older PCs, being able to play stuff like GoldenEye and Nintendo 64 emulators, and Carnival on MAME 2000. Uh, should we say MAME at the time? Because it was just called MAME, not MAME 2003. This is pre-Libretto and such. Incredible game, used to love playing this in the arcade. We're gonna do one other like on game as a final tribute here. And this is a nice two-player mode activate game as well. And you can actually, like I said, have two-player mode activate and have the controllers uh, swap. So you have left and right, moving right and left, and uh, they're actually moving different proportions on the screen. Very, very cool stuff indeed. We'll get to the first boss out here, which reminds me quite a bit of the first boss in Space Harrier. Awesome stuff. And I love arcade games because you have Infinity Continues if you so choose to use them. But if you play a game like Willow Arcade, Infinity Continues won't help because if you die, you actually have checkpoints, which are pretty hard to get past. But I actually did an entire video where I beat Willow Arcade from beginning to end. It was an awesome, awesome thing. You might even get to see me drum in the video if you pay close attention. Yes, this is very much like a Space Harrier boss right now. But yes, we got analog controls. Awesome stuff here. And I'm going to try to work in a hard driving, which requires more CPU intensity. Because I'd love to be able to play hard driving for the arcade cores, but again, it is very, very tough to run. I'm almost done here, but at least I can continue. I'm on a sliver of health here. Hopefully I can take this boss out without dying. It looks like I succeeded. Almost. Oh no! Need our two-player mode activate here to take this boss out. Uh, let's do two-player mode activate to help me out here. Input. User two binds. I'm gonna set this to... PlayStation Classic and do two-player mode activate for the last part of this. There we go, two-player mode activate. Take this boss out. Fast and easy. We got this, guys and gals. And yes, you can do four-player mode activate on TMNT Arcade, X-Men Arcade, and so on. Look how amazing this is. And now we're officially <laughs> past the boss. And I didn't even die because I did two-player mode activate. But now I died after the fact. Are we going to actually uh, go to another game right now? Low content Star Trek 3, we're gonna do Aliens. Uh, Alien 3, should we say. Dummy, uh, 4K, Alien 3. This will be our final game today. Alien 3 Arcade, another game that had control issues. We're gonna run this on the same court, Main 2003 Extreme. And I'd love to have your feedback on which like on games you like to play. And I'll try to check them out and have them worked up accordingly. And if you want any borders for games such as Terminator 2, let me know as well. I'll do uh, one final border to show you how they work. Maybe I'll do Double Dragon for a brief moment with the border. Okay, let's make sure the controls are okay on here. I might have to actually adjust the uh, sensitivity for the key joypad on this game. Well, it's actually not too bad right now. It's not resetting. The analog controls are working amazingly well right now. 
And if you hold the button down, you actually can overheat, so you want to let go. Let your power recharge. Look how nice this is controlling. With overclock and virtual RAM, it is actually running phenomenally well, near flawlessly to the arcade uh, specification. Great, great game. Also a great two-player mode activate game. We can do two-player mode activate in this as well. We're going to go to input uh, user 2 again. And I'm going to do uh, PlayStation Classic Controller. And we got two-player mode activate yet again. There we go. Two-player mode activate again. How awesome is that? Very, very cool indeed. Such an incredible game. Runs so much better than in my past demonstrations of this game. And I did watch the last Alien uh, movies, had fun with them. And because of the Disney takeover of 20th Century Fox, I don't think we're going to be seeing any more Alien movies for a while, unfortunately. But I'd love to see some more of them pop up. 